Good morning. It is Tuesday morning, February 14th. It's Valentine's Day. I'm Scott Hoke. Here's our forecast for central Indiana. We expect cloudy skies with a chance of light snow, maybe some freezing drizzle later this morning, a high of 38 today. Oh, okay. All right. We'll see you in a minute then. Okay. Thanks. All right. Bye. Are you working out? I'm going to after this. Looking good. Looking fit. <laughs> That's it. That is your uh, sports here on the uh, Smiley Morning Show. And my uh, Mayor Ballard. How are you? What's going on in here? What's happening? What? There's a camera in my. What's going on? There's a camera over there too, and another camera. What are you making, Alan? What are you making? We're doing a day in the life, of Mayor Ballard. Uh, in the studio is Mayor Ballard. He's here again. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day, Mayor. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Are you? Did you get some rest after the Super Bowl thing? I did. Are you I, feeling I, better? I had to after Jimmy I, Fallon. That's for sure. Oh so, man. Yeah, you were there. Then. It was fun. Were you there live too? I was there live on the last day. The, uh, the yeah, the, t the, the big show. Thing, the chest bump thing was uh, taped. We taped a few days earlier. Yeah, because I saw that. That was great, man. That was funny. He was a great guy, by the way, and he and his crew really did love Indianapolis. Yeah, I mean, they really did. When he thanked me at the end of the show live yeah. there, he was very sincere about that. He he had a great time in the city. What a night this has been, you guys, especially to us. I want to thank the mayor right now, the mayor of Indianapolis, for taking care of me. At the end, they gave me the sash, which I was very much appreciative. Oh, that said mayor on it. That said yeah. mayor on it. They, you know, they fitted me for that. They actually called us up and asked for dimensions and everything. And, uh, <laughs> and then when I put it on for the first time, I said, you know, this is very similar to the sash I wear every day. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, well, we got the mayor here. We got to take a break. We'll come back. Can you hang out for another break with us? Absolutely. Come to get it every day. Weddings you know, tonight. For, just come up to the service counter and ask is that some kind of a promotion that you did? Or? Like uh, no, it's, 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 this uh, happens often. Uh, and there's, people ask there's you. There's an Hispanic radio station that uh, mm -hmm. does this every. Oh, is that right? And, uh, and they got 44 couples I understand right now. How about that? Are, they, are you going to speak in Spanish? Use your Spanish. No, I, I'll <laughs> translate. <laughs> See, I've been down in Spanish-speaking countries a few, so mm -hmm. I, I had to learn Lo Siento very quickly. Oh, is that right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Lo <laughs> Siento. <laughs> Smiley Morning Show. Hello. Hey, um, I was wondering if I could ask. Um, Mayor Ballard to say happy birthday to his niece, Katie. Oh, how nice is that? Do you have a niece named Katie? I do. Okay, why don't you say it? Katie, happy birthday to you. You just said it. <laughs> I'm the heir. <laughs> oh, well, well, we'll we're taped this. This will be on the air here in a couple of minutes. Okay, great. Okay, so who, now who are you? Uh, I'm his sister, Marianne. Okay, right on. <laughs> what do you think of your uh, brother? I think he's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> give us some inside dirt on the mayor. Some dirt on the yeah, mayor? Yeah, give me some dirt. Like what? Be he, careful there, Marianne. He was, uh, you know, uh, did he get in trouble? Did he get suspended in school? Did, uh, did he miss classes? He was very studious, very athletic, and very responsible. Oh, come on. That's no fun. Give us some dirt. This guy's a sugar holic. I know that. He eats uh, he Captain okay, Crunch he every day. Eat. He used to eat whole bowls of ice cream with chocolate syrup for breakfast. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this is getting good. All right. Used to. Used to. <laughs> used to. Uh, we love the mayor. It's fun <laughs> hanging out with him in the in the morning time. So yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks for the call. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Uh, so yeah. after after this, you do uh, your, your these these camera the camera crew is following you. It's a day in the life of uh, the mayor, which is interesting. You're going to work out next. Do you have any idea where are they going to follow you into the uh, the bathroom or? When you change? Well, I I hope not. They'll shoot you through the <laughs> opaque glass. So. <laughs> just a, like the movies, right? Yeah. 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 Just a slender, opaque image of yeah, flesh. Yeah. Think about uh, take a few pounds off me when you do that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> One thing before you go, uh, I, the uh, is it Georgia Street? I heard right. in the news and I missed it. Are they going to do something more with the Georgia Street now? That's all you know, set up for a party zone there. I'd love to see something. We built it so that it would be tailorable for almost anything. Yeah. There are a lot of ideas out there. Summer festivals, uh, Christmas yes. market, European style yes. Christmas market, I think would be great. I mean, some cities have got festivals, like even Omaha, Nebraska, which is a small town, they have like a street that every weekend, Friday and Saturday night, you know, that street is just packed. They, clo right. uh, they close it off. And yeah. then, I think there's a lot of potential. We had yeah. yesterday with the, the the people who are associated with Georgia Street, the stakeholders, if you will, plus IDI is going to run that for us here. In the, in the, the heat lamp's still in there? Uh, I don't know if it's still <laughs> okay. up or not. But zip line's still there? Up, but don't be surprised if there's a zip line permanently in the city somewhere. What? So. 
Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. We're, we're, we're looking, a couple of people are looking at that. It was pretty wild. Was. I got a great video. You should, you should Google it. Google smiley and zip line. Really? Take a look at okay. it. I, I shot it with my uh, a little head cam, a little oh, uh, <laughs> GoPro camera, and it was awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right. Mayor Ballard, everybody. Yeah. Have a great day. Good luck with all these cameras following you around. Appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> great job. Have a great day with the mayor. I love the mayor. Yeah. Goodbye, 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 goodbye,
to at least have some people come back to me sometimes 15 to 20 years later and they'll say, you know, you said something to me 20 years ago or 15 years ago. I don't remember what I told them, but they remember. You know, they're doing what they think is right, but that, that kid needed to hear that. They needed that support somewhere along the way and it changed the path of that child. And that's what's really important. And we all need to make sure that we continue to change the paths of these children for the better. Thank you so much, Carver. Very much appreciated. How are you doing? You okay? I'm good. I am. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> it's a whole new, whole new environment, but yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> there we go. Call on the first has your name on it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice big piece of cake. <laughs> oh, no. Appreciate the Kroger Bakery commercial here. I saw you actually have the cake. Make sure I don't have any ice cream. I mean, uh, I think. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Okay, where are you? I, think okay, all, right. I think it's all gone. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. All right. Um, well, I hope that, uh, you know, they go back to the legislation that uh, we all agree on. The WTHR interview contemplated this afternoon was one of the guys who were already late with cutting across their names. Sure. You can try to move it. Yeah, but we have about an hour late this afternoon. Okay, after our reading. Yeah. Oh, before dinner? Yeah. Oh, that's okay then? Yeah. 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 Well, I'll check with them. I mean, we're already going to be late and it's really pretty close to our new meetings after. Are we good? All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Take care. Okay. One thing that he really did outside of the box would be when he joined the Marine Corps. I don't think in, any of us saw that coming. I had about 90 hours done at IU. I was uh, thinking, oh, maybe I'll just go do something else and not finish up. So I went in and talked to the Army, Navy, and the Air Force. I was not gonna talk to the Marine Corps. As luck would have it, the Army, Navy, and Air Force recruiters were busy, and the Marine recruiter was not busy. And he came out to me, he was an old drill sergeant, and I'm not exaggerating this. He comes out and says, hey, we wanna talk about the Marine Corps. I was scared to death. <laughs> I went and talked to him, I talked to him for two hours. He essentially said, go back to school, finish up and come in uh, after you graduate from college. And so that's kind of what I did. So we're working with the developer to scale it back, and, yeah. and that and that's ongoing. And so that's where I would just suggest you stick to yeah. it. Juber's working on that's what I talked okay. to him about last week. Do we want to do this now or after the? Do it now. Okay. Just went back. There he is. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? And joining me now is Mayor Greg Ballard of the City of Indianapolis. And Mayor, welcome. Has the I see you're still glowing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun and, of course, great accomplishment for the City of Indianapolis. I, I think it was. I, I, I've never seen so many people so happy when you'd walk the village and you see how much people uh, were coming together and enjoying each other's company. I thought it was a very, very special. But it's just the result of so many people. Uh, great planning by the committee, uh, DPW, DPS. Uh, just so many folks. The volunteer base was incredible. Yeah, and yeah. all this all this work, ICVA, so many people came together. Well, thank you so much for your time. We so appreciate it. And congratulations. Thank you so much, Andrew. But I love the light that this yeah, this was <laughs> So so what are you doing here? We're gonna do that. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. 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 Hey again, uh, we need to have you back here and talk about yeah. 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 The, I don't know what the next rotation is. Well we'll call your office and find out, but that was so much fun. I was loving yeah. your show. 817, former Marine and now Mayor, Greg Ballard. I think it's you always soon. Marine. I guess you're right. Uh, you're never a once a Marine, always a Marine. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're just not uh, on duty, I guess. Not <laughs> uniform, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fit anymore. <laughs> Top and give us the 
funny. <laughs> Do a rundown of items that you would find on a, an upscale restaurant here in Indianapolis. We we'll right. won't mention the name, <laughs> yeah. uh, but just tell us how so picky you are you when we go down, down the menu. There's the menu in front of you. Deb's going to read it to you. You'd say, mm, I'd order that or mm, not, a, not is, a chance. I hope so it's is, not an Italian restaurant. No, <laughs> it, it is not, but it's just a yes or no, okay, okay. Mayor? Okay, Here we right. go. Salmon? No. Okay. Uh, lobster? No. Uh, scallops? No. Shrimp cocktail? No. <laughs> Oysters? No. <laughs> Crab cakes? I think this is a seafood restaurant. Well, we're going to move on we're to We're on the wrong items. track here. <laughs> Crab cakes? No. French onion soup? No. Oh, my gosh. Caesar salad? No. <laughs> Tomatoes? No. Steak? Yes. We got one. <laughs> <laughs> Lamb chops? Yes. Ooh, wow. wow. No. Lasagna? No. Mm-hmm. Fried chicken? Yes. Asparagus? No. <laughs> Green beans? Oh, my God, no. <laughs> That's a standard vegetable. Where was your mother growing up? She didn't say you I'm, have to I'm eat here to vegetables. tell you, it's not my mother because the other, my siblings are all normal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Broccoli? No. Mm-hmm. Spinach? No. Mushrooms? No. Baked potato? Yes. Wow. Mashed potatoes? Yes. French fries? Yes. Mac and cheese? No. <laughs> Cheesecake? No. Mm. Key lime pie? No. Carrot cake? No. Creme brulee? No. Ice cream? Uh, vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> okay. Watermelon? No. Kiwi? No. Carrots? No. Celery? No. String cheese? No. Cottage cheese? No. Almonds? No. Popcorn? <laughs> Yes. Popcorn. Yeah, sure. You know, that, that's it, but I don't think we'll be meeting for lunch anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun. It's always fun doing our show. Yeah, yeah. we have a good time. And we're not, yeah, we, but we, we are going to get you to have your own sash from there. We think you need to have your own sash, you know. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. How are you? I'm all right. Good to see you. You're popular. Yeah. Yeah. We got Cruz following you. And- Hey, just wanted to ask okay. you um, about your position on the canal, the student housing, the 26 stories. I understand that you've asked the developer to reconsider that and, and you know, something lower. Well, we want to make sure that it fits within the ambiance of, of the canal, and that's, uh, that's pretty much what that was about. Okay, and then just have to ask you as a follow-up, now that the smoking ban has been... I can't uh, believe you're doing it. I know, still, I know, still. I, know. I was asked to ask you about this, so <laughs> is, is there any chance of, of compromise going forward is there is it still the clubs is that the overriding i think we did compromise i mean we're the ones who compromised so i I was they know where the line is and i I think private clubs should remain private and bent uh, on that and i think the city is ready for that right now so i'm okay with uh with the with the bars and the hotel rooms and that sort of thing okay if they take action they take action all right that is all we need thank you sir okay well, it's, uh, you always worried about it, but you know, we've been playing this for a long time. We've played in the Super Bowl for a long, long time, uh, really almost four years out. Uh, as we got closer and closer and closer, uh, and I always told people, I, th- I, I told them point blank, I said, we're going to nail this. And unless there's something unknown, we're going to nail this thing. <laughs> the, the most meaningful event for me was the Wounded Warriors playing the ex-NFL players. Uh, you know, when you look at the technology of these guys now that they're using for their prosthetic legs and, uh, and the kind of life they can live now as opposed to just 20 or 30 years ago, it's really remarkable to see these guys running at full speed, at good speed, uh, and then diving for balls and everything else. It's really got, it was really motivating, i got to tell you. And the fact that the ex-NFL players came out and talked to them, uh, played with them, uh, Jeff George here locally, uh, uh, quarterback for the Wooded Warriors, that was pretty special moment I think uh, all of that and all that came together uh, at that event I thought that was that was uh, that was certainly the highlight for me Once a month, we show up, we give out information, needs, desires, basically anything and everything 
that someone in the Spanish-speaking community would have any interest in. The first ever Indiana Latino Expo. Uh, it'd be more than a festival. It'd also off offer a mobile consulate and a health fair, which is very important. I really encourage people always to get their health checked out. There's about 100,000 Latinos in, in Marion County, uh, Indianapolis area, not including the Donut Counties. So you're reaching at least 100,000 of them because every single one of them listens to one of the three radio stations. Very important to us, uh, the first ever Latino Expo, we're trying to bring the, uh, the community together and, uh, and really uh, be powerful as, as a group. And Under the previous mayor, he did have an advisor on Latino affairs, but it was not a direct report to the mayor. Um, it wasn't a, an official, I guess, appointed cabinet level position as it currently is today. And so one of the first things the mayor did in his first administration was morph that from an advisory role to more of an actual operational role. And from there, it's just grown. And I appreciate that uh, as many people as possible come out June 24th at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. And really just the increase in visibility of the mayor in the Latino community at their events, uh, at their benefits, at their community centers, their churches, um, I, so I think they, they have a really good opinion of him. It'll be fun. Be there. <laughs> <laughs> so please uh, take advantage of these great opportunities to, to learn more about and uh, to be safe out there. A lot going on. Uh, a couple more months here of winter and then we're going to have a great spring and summer. Muchísimas gracias otra vez por tenerme aquí. Este, quiero que disfruten de lo que tenemos aquí en la ciudad. Quiero que salgan. But what I particularly like about the mayor and respect and admire about the mayor is he is all about getting the job done. And he wants to make sure that it's what's right for the community and the city, not himself or his political party or his campaign. He's really about getting the job done. He sets a goal, he tells his team, this is my goal, and then he lets us uh, reach that goal. So his, his mentality, his drive, his love of the city, uh, and his just his desire to do things right and do them right by the city and their citizens. But it's that, it's that sense of duty and obligation to the city and, and the people that, that really, in my opinion, weighs, uh, weighs heavily. It shows integrity on his part, that, that, that I, I'm a fan of integrity, decency, and honor. And, and this man has all of those things in spades. Certainly we are trying to get the city of Indianapolis to have a more international profile. I'm convinced that uh, we're, we're in the global economy now. Some people may not see it, but I think we're in it right now. And we need to look at uh, the competition, not as as Columbus, Ohio, Louisville, Kentucky, but as Cologne, Germany, and you know other cities around the world. We, we're friendly with those folks, and obviously, but you know we're also looking at expanding business opportunities, cultural opportunities to get the name of Minneapolis around the world so that businesses do, when, uh, when they do want a North American base of operation, or United States base of operations, they look at Indianapolis as a place to be. In addition to, we want our companies to expand overseas. And we have companies here that most people probably don't even know about that have uh, operations overseas, which I think is very beneficial for, for us because now we have an, essentially an international headquarters. So if we can grow our companies here to become more international in their presence, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have a vibrant economy. And so we really need to embrace the global economy now and uh, we're working hard to do that. I tell people all the time, we're, we're in a multi-generational cycle now where so many parents don't know how to be a parent to the kid. They know their kid is actually supposed to show up on the first day of school. I mean, some of this stuff breaks your heart. And I, and I, cause I know these teachers are working their tail off on me and these principals, I, I've walked into so many schools on a and everybody's always on task. They're always doing their work. Uh, but you know, the stories that they tell they just break your heart, absolutely break your heart about parents not being involved uh, and, the, and the teachers kind of try to fill that gap for them. We need to look at schools more broadly as just a, a place for kids to go to school. Uh, we need to look at it, can they become more of a community center, uh, can they be an anchor institution in the neighborhood and that sort of thing uh, so that the kids feel more comfortable there, the parents feel more comfortable going to the school and that sort of thing. Thank you so much. Show me the way. All right, all right. I'll follow you, okay?
How's everybody? Good. Uh, you guys know what this book is about? Yes. Do you like red eggs and ham? Yes. yes. I do. All right, here we go. Ready? I am Sam. Sam. I am Sam. Sam, I am. That's Sam I am. That's Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you. Thank you, Sam I am. Now that's a great book. Okay. All right, boys and girls, stand up. It's always a good, the good teacher. I mean, everybody would tell you, a uh, good teacher is, is worth uh, worth every bit that you could pay them. And so many studies have been done saying that if a, a school, if a kid has two bad teachers in a row, they're probably lost forever. I'm not sure there are bad teachers. It just you want to be bad. I mean, some people are not just not as skilled as others, just like in any other profession. Uh, so you want to make sure that the uh, the good teachers come to the forefront, uh, remain uh, uh, at the schools. Uh, while well, the others might have to choose another profession. I think that's, for, I mean, that happens everywhere. And I, I'm not sure why we're so reluctant to, to admit that. In the past, people say this would affect kids, this would affect kids, this would do it. But I think all the research now shows you put a good teacher in front of that kid, the kid will get it. And they'll like the curriculum if you can get the right teacher in there. I had worked uh, at the deputy level in a couple of agencies for the governor, for Governor Mitch Daniels. A couple of people uh, recommended my name to uh, Mayor Ballard during the campaign and, and following the campaign. Uh, he started talking to me and others about coming to work for him. Well, I, was at, I was in the hospital room with my dad on uh, Christmas Eve and Mayor Ballard called me and said, hey, here's, you know, I, I want you to join the team, here's what I'm thinking. Unfortunately, my, my father was dying. He passed away on what would have, what been, would have been my first day here. I regret the fact that my dad and Mayor Ballard never got to meet because he had that sort of the Navy Marine connection. But but you know I remember uh, talking it over with my dad and he had a copy of the mayor's book on leadership, paging through the book, saying, you know this guy, I think this guy's a real high integrity individual. I think you need to do this. I think it's really these two slides we're talking about. So I think all the the four of us have been working on this. I know we we briefed you three weeks ago and it was pretty it was pretty short. And Bill Taft was there about this you know massive community investment program. I we've gotten really good feedback from everybody from Willie Endowment to Lisk to um, you know Mark Miles to the state to housing tax credit finance authority whatever that. We're getting, we're getting feedback from a lot of people that this could be the transformational initiative of the next four years. This is, this is what's beyond the big game. This is the big idea, a billion dollars in community investment. I think there's a way that it could be a combination of neighborhoods slash corridors, which include transit corridors and waterways. And then, so then and it's, trails and parks. And trails and parks, yeah. of course. So instead of having neighborhood, 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 it starts to look maybe more like an amoeba. We want made things like the art to art trail is that, got that right there, art to art, and bribable, mm -hmm. things like that too. Correct, like that, things like that. And like, there, the, like the canal and bribable too, and stuff. Canal would fit into that, so would, you know, maybe taking a uh, uh, Fall Creek, Fall Creek area, we got all that empty lot and space and trying to make that usable and, 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 uh, and, and using some things in like Riverside Park and the river yeah. right. to make that linkage from Tech 16 to, to the Art Museum to Lafayette Square. Um, is it, is it, you know, we think from listening to you, it's waterways and transit and parks and trails, right? But what are those, what are those factors you'd want to focus in on? And then what we do over the next few months is we'd go through a process 
backed up by data with this with this third party entity, the Public Policy Institute, to help us make some of those choices. I think the biggest downside is going to be what pro if we're using a combination of rebuild and the and TIF is what project won't be done. We have to also look at this as being a perpetual, not of the you're in, you're out. This is if we get this going and we do it right, this become a perpetual thing which will continue. So the neighborhoods that are on the cusp, maybe today, can see where it's going, and because this is happening, they slide, slide up. We got we got a lot of the basic stuff done. Yeah, and, and it's done to to make a change, just like we did on George Street. Right. That's why that. You know, the canal thing and rubber one of those things in town square we have to make a change in the great spaces in the city and we have to connect those great spaces bring it back to this is what we were talking about this morning one of the organizing principles of this could be the it's not just neighborhood state revitalization it's it's creating the types of communities that attract the talent yeah. and and the, and the international and but there's a way because a lot of, in the, a lot of right and that's where the market forces have to take over at exactly. some point for that to right. happen. But that's right. why this seeds that. And the plan, I think a lot of it is even in the plan to say, well, this is not, like you said, it's not a three or five year plan. It's a perpetual plan, but it's got different phases. And wow, I can really see they're focused and they're thinking about the right things as a city. And they've got money behind it that's going to get leveraged. So it's just the mindset that, well, yeah, it, it looks a little rough now in certain areas, but wow, they got a plan in place. Are we generally going to? To know you want me to generally know I, I kind of want to generally know what we're going to do with it oh yeah yeah clearly I don't want to come out with a concept I want to come out with some structure behind it one thing that I'll never get comfortable with in in the job as deputy mayor is it's never enough you know we could we could we could we could have ten ribbon cuttings tomorrow in on critical neighborhood projects and there would be a hundred more projects that we need to do and so that's all that's always the challenge I mean you're, you're you feel like you're constantly fighting that uphill battle but um, the thing that is very encouraging is that um, as the years go by, you see more and more neighborhood organizations forming. The quality of neighborhood leadership gets better and better in our city, and that's, that gives us hope. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. People want some kind of a slick politician who's going to come in and give a speech and tell them exactly what they want to hear. They're going to be disappointed in Greg Ballard. But if people want somebody who uh, will follow through, will actually listen to people and let their ideas inform his thinking and will do what he say will 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 uh, uh, do what he says do what he says he's going to do and uh, and and always make good on his word um, he, he just he creates a great environment to work in because he, he's I mean he knows he knows what it means to be the chief executive he'll always say to me okay Michael I want you to do these three things okay use all the tools at your disposal to get them done and he and I meet m once a week, and I, I run down the list of projects, and he gives me direction. And uh, it's, it's, it's a, a really empowering environment to work in. I think the other senior staff would tell you the same. Is it ever frustrating to have a great idea and then to see the pace that it takes to enact that great idea? You get used to it. <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, you know, it's easy. You, you always like to flip the switch, but it just, life doesn't work that way. You got too many people involved, you got dynamics, you got history, you got uh, vested interests, you, you just got to work through all that stuff. And you got to have people dedicated to it, believing it's the right thing to do and continue on. So, but uh, you certainly learn in government, yeah, nothing <laughs> nothing works <laughs> real quickly. It takes a while to get there. What theme do you see for Indianapolis? Well, I probably look at that differently than most because I, I, I tell people I have the benefit of distance. Uh, I spent 23 years in the Marine Corps. I mean, this is my hometown. I grew up here, left it for 23 years, visiting it back on, on leave and everything else. Uh, I just see this as opportunity. I, I mean, I see tremendous opportunity in the city, and sometimes people have trouble seeing it, and you kind of have to convince them of it. But we have we have great people in here. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I wanted to move back to Indianapolis, and I I almost wanted to keep it a little secret because I know what a great little city, what a great city it is. Uh, and I, but now now the mayor, obviously, when you look at long term health of the city, uh, it has to continue to grow and evolve in different ways. Uh, and but we have so many. Uh, things in place, uh, especially for the for the uh, creative class, that young men and women of 20s and 30s, where they want to raise their family and hopefully, and then which would then bring in businesses into the city. We have so many of those things in place. I, I just see tremendous opportunity in the city, and I, I just want people to understand that we we have all those building blocks into place. It's a matter of executing it and continuing to go forward. architectural 
Mars. He's a Sikh. He claims to be the first Sikh in the city of Indianapolis. He jokes about that. He probably was, actually. He was an urban planner for Mayor Luger. And uh, he does these architectural drawings from around the world, and he does a lot of Indianapolis stuff, too. Uh, but he's a, he's, a, he's a great guy. I had him do uh, the benediction. Uh, was it the benediction or the opening prayer? I can't remember at my inaugural. I can't remember. But he does prayers for us all the time. He's a, he's a Sikh. I've been down to his temple a couple of times. Uh, great folks. We have a strong Sikh community in the city. I don't know if you know that or not, but he's very strong on the southeast side of town. Kipi's a great guy. Married to uh, a wonderful lady named Janice, who taught my kids English at rebuff. And so that's great. He's just a great guy. I was working in a bank as a bank teller. So he would always come to the bank, to the window, and cash a check, deposit a check. But then it became almost every day. <laughs> so, so I was doing this for a while until uh, one, well, actually a month uh, or so, he was coming. And then, um, then a month later, he, he got sh shipped to Okinawa, Japan. He was sending flowers every, for roses every week. You think a marine is not, a, is not romantic, but they do, they are romantic. So I was getting flowers, and six months later he came back. A week later he proposed. And then that was in uh, three, two months later, it was in January. I think he came back in November, so January 2nd, we got married. It was quick. I don't think you would want to focus on diabetes, right? Now that whole, uh, do you want to focus on holistic in the health, well, health in, health in it? I use diabetes because I thought that yeah. was easy, yeah. it was easy to message to. They wanted to go broader, yeah. And I said, okay, I'll go broader, but we got to be able to message. The it. mayor has a uh, a vision about having a holistic health initiative that's been uh, supported by the hospitals and other health agencies with him using the bullet pulpit of the mayor's office to support it. They, they want to message a broader health piece and make you the, the health person. Specific but, but that's, disease it's, it's and got a structure to it. It's got a structure and easy to people to pick you, up on. You talked about diabetes, they talked about obesity, and you said, well, so yeah, you get both. You, you get, get both. Diabetes, yeah, you, get both. Yeah, you, get, you get exercise, you yeah. get uh, walking, you get bicycle riding, you get eating, right. uh, menu yeah. choice. Uh, it's going to be a four-year campaign, right. you know, constantly building up to end project, end ideas. But no, no one can wrap around their head around ten things. No, I, I can't, no one. I mean, no one does that. I know it. The it's, studies have been done at three to five things yeah, at the most. So. I, I I tell people, I say, what you see is what you getting. Trust me, and I always and I tell people when they meet with me, I tell them, I tell them one simple thing: get to the point. He's a straight up get to the point guy. Sometimes it's hard for people to realize, this is the mayor, so I got to go with some trick. No, I'll just be straight up, and you'll get a straight up answer and a straight up idea from him. I, you know, I envisioned that when people saw Mary Greg Ballard, they would see you at a and say, Mary, my diabetes is good. I yeah. checked my diabetes, Mary. Right. Good job. You know, I'm, I'm, you ask him, hey, how is it? Oh, I went to the doctor. He said I was good. The irony of me drinking a Mountain Dew is I lost on anybody in this room. I'm assuming. <laughs> But my, but my blood is good, trust yeah. me. I, I mean, you, I mean that is, you can provoke thoughts. When you got something that you're talking about constantly, and you have to message, and they see you, you're on the bike, and we, we ride, and we talk about it, you bring, they, they, they make them think. You gotta, if, you don't, if they don't think about it, and be aware of it, they won't do anything about it. But once they see you and provoke, and they see, oh, I gotta, I shouldn't, I gotta check this. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Did y'all get my best side? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, now. <laughs> All right. All right. That's hilarious. Okay. You know, he's not a baby kisser. He's not trying to fool people, but he loves people. And I always tell him, the one, the one critical point I would have about the mayor, the mayor, you like everyone. You like everybody. It's somebody you don't like. Bart Peterson was 
uh, at the start of that campaign, a very popular mayor. Most people um, kind of speculated that Mayor Peterson might end up continuing his political career in a, a statewide or a federal office. Peterson was very popular during his first term and even during his second term. Um, at the very end of his second term, there were a whole series of circumstances that, that led to this opening for a challenger to come in and, and win. You had some serious crime problems that occurred in the city. You had uh, the property tax issue, which was Marion County property taxes in a lot of, in a lot of neighborhoods skyrocketed overnight, largely because of actions at the state government. But um, you know the, the mayor's office was the one on the ballot that year, and that, that's who paid the penalty. They had money troubles. I mean, part of Peterson's downfall in, in the end was a tax increase that he approved in, in his final year in office. And it was something that, that he, he had a high approval rating, good poll numbers. He thought he could survive that. Turns out it was a, it was a big mistake. I think everybody assumed at the time that uh, Mayor Peterson would have a very easy go of it because uh, he was perceived to be such a very good candidate. Ballard was basically an unknown. He, he got no meaningful endorsements in the primary and the Marion County Republican Party didn't endorse any of the candidates. It was a wide open primary. I think many people in the Republican Party didn't know him very well. He didn't have any experience as a politician before he ran for mayor. And so, uh, you know, whereas they got behind him as a, as a fellow Republican, I don't know if it's fair to say that they were necessarily overly enthusiastic in their support of his candidacy. So he won the primary. At that point, the Marion County Republican Party has no choice but to endorse him. But it was really a lukewarm endorsement. They, they gave him an office with a desk and a phone at, at party headquarters. And that was it. Their, their entire focus in the 2007 campaign was winning control of the city county council. Uh, they had written off the mayor's race. It was in, it was in this room where we're, where we're talking right now um, that I really first got to know uh, Mayor Ballard. It, it was very obvious to me that, you know, here was a guy who was going through this for the first time, Greg Ballard, versus somebody who was someone who was very, very familiar with the political process in Bart Peterson. That I want to represent the taxpayers and not any political organization or any organization whatsoever. I'm not in this for me. I'm just in this for public service. That's it. And I'll do the right thing by you. I promise that. Looking back, the most important thing he did was, was just to make sure that he was out there every day talking to people. And then when things exploded, whether it was outrage over tax increases or, or, or rallies regarding crime or, or, or other things that people were mad about, he made sure he was there. He made sure he was, if there were 200 people um, protesting a tax increase in Broad Ripple, he made sure to show up so that they knew that he was the guy that was willing to address that. Property taxes are part of it. I'm on record as saying that property taxes have to go. His campaign slogan that year was, had enough, question mark. As in, have you had enough? Are you mad? And if you are, I'm the guy to vote for. Can you believe Bart Peterson and the Indianapolis City County Council passed the 2007 budget with blank pages on the summary sheets? Greg Ballard wants to open up government so citizens can see where their tax dollars are going. Had enough? On election day, vote Greg Ballard for Indianapolis mayor. Bart Peterson had, had all the money you could want to run for re-election, and Greg Ballard had almost nothing. He didn't get TV commercials on the air until the last weekend. What, I've said, what I said on election night in 2007 and what I've said since is that this was really a referendum on Bart Peterson. The choice was Bart Peterson or not Bart Peterson. Early on election day, I remember talking to Democrats and Republicans. Everyone uh, assumed it was going to be a close race. By this point, we'd had a number of polls that showed this race was a lot closer than people would have ever expected. Um, but I think people still thought Ballard wasn't going to win. No one thought that, that Greg Ballard was going to have a shot. And I think that the people who did get out and vote were the people who were very motivated um, about how high their property taxes had gotten and how high they perceived the Democrats were going to raise their taxes again. Um, and I think that many of the people who may have been Mayor Peterson's supporters perhaps got overconfident and did not get out and vote 
because they did not perceive Greg Ballard as being a candidate who was a threat. And so it was a combination of the people who did get out being very, very motivated for change and then the supporters of, of Mayor Peterson perhaps taking the election for granted and not getting out like maybe they should have. The results started coming in uh, right after 6 o'clock and in precinct after precinct you were seeing that Ballard was outperforming uh, what, what you would have expected and he was outperforming Republican mayoral candidates from the previous two elections. I'm pretty proud of my, my record in predicting wins and losses and by, by various politicians I missed that one. I, I, I'm happy to, happy to share that uh, I, I thought Bart Peterson would win. Uh, I knew it would be close, um, but uh, I was as surprised as anyone that Greg Ballard pulled that out. Well, it's pretty obvious by now, I think, but we understand that the mayor has called Greg Batter, Ballard to concede and to congratulate him on his victory in this race for mayor. This is a huge, historic upset, isn't it? Bigger than any in memory bigger than any possibly since uh, Dan Quayle beat Birch by statewide for the U.S. Senate please, in 1980. Please. Wow. Welcome, welcome to the biggest upset in Indiana political history. When he first became mayor, next day I put on my Ballard for Mayor t-shirt and I drove down to my father's gravesite and I just wanted to tell my dad that his son was elected mayor of Indianapolis. My brother Greg, my mother, my brother Dan, they all, they all wanted to do the same thing. They all wanted to come to my father's gravesite and say that, by golly, your, your son is the new mayor of Indianapolis. It was a very happy moment. I think that, that the main impression I have about the, uh, the first term um, of Mayor Ballard is that he proved a lot of people wrong. Um, there were some people who sincerely wondered whether or not he was up to the job um, because they weren't familiar with him, because he didn't have the typical background that you would expect from, uh, from a politician. And so I think in his first term, he did prove to a lot of people that he was up to the job. Infrastructure improvements are probably his, his biggest achievement. If you look at what's been done with the waterways and with uh, streets and sidewalks, um, he, he's managed to make a lot of improvements around the city. You know, it's not sexy. It's not uh, something that, that, you know, people get up in the morning and, and cheer about. But I, I think the work that he's done to address the infrastructure problems in the city um, really are going to have a, an impact for generations to come. I think he's unique because it, he, he doesn't put on an act. You'll see a lot of politicians who feel that they need to be a cheerleader that, that uh, they, they need to have a public persona of some kind. With Greg Ballard, what you see is what you get. And uh, you know, if you like it, okay, and if, if you don't, I'm, I think he's okay with that too. He still does not appear to be a politician. There are some aspects of, of the job which I would imagine, I don't want to speak for him, but I think that there are some aspects of the job that maybe he's still not quite as comfortable with as other quote unquote politicians. Um, and I think he's okay with that. Whatever anyone thinks of, of Greg Ballard, and, and over the years I've written columns that supported what he's done and opposed what, he, what he's done, I, he, he truly does seem like a sincere guy. And when I think back to 2007 um, and, and, and the conversations that I had with him in the weeks before the election and in the days after the election, he truly did see like, seem like just an average guy who was frustrated and wanted to be involved. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's too early to say what his, his greatest accomplishment is going to be. I think there's a lot that's still unwritten as far as his tenure as mayor. And so I, I take a little bit more of a wait and see approach to see, you know, what will um, emerge as, as his greatest achievement. What's the one thing that you wish the people of Indianapolis knew about your brother? He truly is passionate about working for the city. I don't think he does any of this really for himself. He, he works too hard and spends too many hours doing this for it to be for any other reason than to really move the city forward. I truly do not believe that he has any other agenda other than to accomplish that. He is a thinker and he just really wants to do the right thing. He wants the right thing to be not only for today, but he wants it to be 
10 years from now and 20 years from now. He wants to really put things in process that, you know, serve the population today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day. He really is a good-hearted guy. I'm not sure there's a negative thing that I could tell you about my brother. take Platt Stanley to different places. My nephew sent me one during the Gulf War back in 1991, and I carried him with me to wrote, you wrote, let him know about where Jeff Platt Stanley's been. When we got a sister city in Hyderabad, I took a Platt Stanley with me to India and took pictures of Platt Stanley, then you sent him back to the kid. It's, very, it's really a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun. One more time for the Emperor Commander. Right. Right. Can I get your picture with him? Oh, yeah. All right. Reese. You run the gear or something? <laughs> <laughs> See Darnell trying to hide? Sir, how are you? Great, how you doing? Always good. Are they ready to be? Yeah, I'll watch you. Good to see you again. Let's see. Okay, take care. How you doing? Nice to see you. You guys all right? Hi there. You doing okay? All right. Look here. Earl, how you doing? I'm here. He's got needle, man. I know you tried. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Looking good? <laughs> I don't know if we got room to get on that. We'll probably be first in here. We'll probably be first in here. Oh, sure. What's up, Brenda? How are you doing? You all right? How do you remember so many names? How many names do you got rattling around? Actually, uh, I don't know, because uh, sometimes I don't think uh, I remember a lot of names. Do you ever entertain up here, like out of town people that come in? No, we haven't. Uh, you know, the city suite, it's kind of funny, there's a story to that, where Steve Goldsmith, when they built this place, Steve Goldsmith was the mayor, and, he, and uh, apparently he was asked where he wants the suite, he says, I don't need a suite. And, and so they, uh, but the patient said, no, you need a suite. So he said, well, throw it anywhere. So they threw it kind of up there uh, in the corner on the upper deck. And uh, so, so it's not really a good place to necessarily entertain bring people in. Do the Colts do a similar thing for you? Actually, we have a uh, we do have a really nice suite there at, at you know, about 40 yard line at the Lucas Oil Stadium, so we can bring people right in there. Did you right. did you watch the Super Bowl from there? Did you no, there? actually, uh, you know, everybody had to give up their suites for the Super Bowl, and uh, so uh, and then the economic development folks developed any bought a small suite, and that's where I was because we were entertaining clients and their companies in there potentially come here or potentially could expand here and that's what we use the Super Bowl for. Did you have, uh, I don't know, any uh, third cousins coming to you for tickets? I had some, uh, no, not really, not not too much of that. I had some people come thinking that I had all the tickets, but they didn't realize the Super Bowl, the NFL take, really essentially takes all the tickets and then redistributes them out. It's not like the city of Indianapolis or you know, anybody has special tickets. The NFL doesn't really control the all the tickets. And so even I didn't have access to them. So. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I was able to, to bring my kids in, but I bought the kids' tickets, so, uh, so that I mean, it's, it's that tightly controlled. But I, I had a few people saying, "Hey, can you, you know, give me some tickets?" You know, and just couldn't do it. My desert boots I wore in high school. Not a, not a pair like them. Those are them. What's the exact pair? It's amazing. Yeah. 
Oh no, things just disappear around our house to our kids. <laughs> yeah, he's just a real guy, you know. I mean, he's he's in politics and he he has to put on a face, you know, no, no matter where he goes outside of the house. But he's, I mean, he's a dad, you know. He's a husband. He's he jokes around a lot. He's a huge sports fan. Um, he's just a regular guy. He's a really smart guy, <laughs> running a city, but he's he's like just a good guy. How would you describe him as a father? Great, extremely supportive about me doing what I want to do. He, you know, they raised us so well that they they trust us, trust us in everything that we do. And if we feel like we can go out and be on our own and pursue our dreams, he's going to be behind us 100%. He's not going to let us starve. He said that multiple times. You know, go out there and you know if, if it doesn't work out, you can always come back home. We'll always be here for you. Do you think you get treated different by your peers because of the fact that you're no, no, I. Like, when we were in the military, you, you learn how to choose good friends, and I've chosen a lot of good friends around here who don't really care what my parents do, and a lot of them knew my, my parents before they were in the position that they are, so I, I surround myself with good people. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate it. Good luck, guys. Rest of the night. Stay good. And you will. You'll do well out here tonight. You'll make a number of people very happy. <laughs> You know, the mayor is excellent about attending as much as he can attend and packing his day as full as he can possibly pack it. But I personally think that this is his, uh, this is one of the more special things for him to do. And he said one time, he's like, this is one of my favorite things to do as a mayor. Because how many times do you get to not only be present uh, at someone's special day, but really be the reason that they have that special day? You know, the guy who, who signs the paper, that signs the marriage certificate, who says the vows. Um, and so he really enjoys that aspect of it. For him, I think that's one of the best parts of being mayor. We're going to be, we're we're gonna be standing right up okay, there. They're all gonna be here. And then they're all just going to be yeah, right here. Oh, no, 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 no. No, just seven, eight, nine, seven. No, this, this will more than double. <laughs> well, I was going to yeah. say, so you've married about seven to nine couples over here year as mayor. Yeah. I see your wife is here. How are you guys celebrating Valentine's Day? Is this kind of it or, or out to dinner or anything like that? Anything fun? Well, this is it. Now, I, I'm going to be candid with you here, yes. all right? All right. I said, honey, do you want to go out for dinner? She goes, no, not really. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell that to the married couples here. I know. <laughs> Everybody's getting ready. Just get ready or get your ready. I am. Dearly beloved. Queridos hermanos. We have come together in the presence of God. Estamos aquí reunidos en la presencia de Dios. We rejoice with them in this union. Nos alegramos con ellos en esta unión. Created by friendship, respect, and love. Nacido de amistad, respeto y amor. By the authority vested in me by the laws of the state of Indiana. En la virtud de la autoridad que me ha sido conferida por las leyes del estado de Indiana. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Yo los declaro marido y mujer. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Ahora ya